Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Angelique Rewers, CEO and founder of The Corporate Agent, and I have a real treat for you today. I am here with one of our Velocity Platinum members, Casey Benedict, CEO and founder of Kitchen Play. Hey Casey, how are you? I'm great, Angelique. How are you? I am awesome, and I'm super excited to be talking with you today. There's really two different things I want to talk with you about that I know is going to be super helpful for our clients and, and everyone in our community. And the first thing is I really want to hear about your business and the amazing things that you're doing with organizations out there today. There are still so many misconceptions and fears about the idea that if I'm just a one-person business or a five-person business or a ten-person business, I can't make an impact on organizations. Like who am I to make an impact on these companies? And so small business, making big dents in big business is what we're all about. And you are just doing some really innovative things. So I want you to share a bit about that as inspiration for folks who, you know, you're just feeling like you're not big enough to play big and that could not be farther from the truth. And then the other thing, Casey, I really want to talk about today is your journey in our platinum program because you have really, you know, you've built this business like all of us. There have been ups, there have been downs, there have been twists and turns and right turns and wrong turns. Um, and you've had just this really amazing year. And so I want to share that with everyone because folks actually often learn more about the shifts they need to make in their business and how to make smart decisions that align with where they want to go when they hear it from our clients instead of from us. So if that sounds like a good game plan for me, for you, then that's what we're going to do today. Awesome. I'm awesome. game. <laughs> awesome. So first let's talk about kitchen play because people might think that we're talking about like a kitchen, a kitchen store. Um, so talk about kitchen play, the brand, what you guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. So at kitchen play, we are the experts at helping smart food and beverage brands develop and deliver high impact influencer marketing campaigns. So we are an authority in influencer marketing and um, it's, I call us an agency and we work alongside traditional marketing and PR and advertising agencies to bring a level of depth to again, their strategies and their um, rollout of programs that, and on our end, we're just focusing on the influencer marketing piece, but um, also finding that it's not as narrow a niche as we once thought it was, and it's starting to branch out, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into that. It's, it, we're seeing opportunities all over the place to connect with our clients on a deeper level and offer them, you know, affiliated services that are at the root are influencer marketing, but really support their bigger marketing goals as well. That's amazing. One of the things I love that what, so I love that you're clear that you're in that, that food industry, that that's, that's your space. But you said something else that I don't want to gloss over. So many folks would look at that market and they would think there are all of these marketing agencies PR agencies, social media agencies, digital marketing agencies that are already serving that space. So how could there possibly be a space for them? And you said you're working right alongside these organizations. Can you just say more about that? Because the fact that people look at things and think, well, there's no more room for me. I mean, there's the pie gets bigger. It's not like we dice up a zero sum game. It just, the pie gets bigger and bigger. So talk about, talk about that space that you play and that sort of co-opetition place that you're in. Sure. We actually are really clear about the fact that we are not competitive with other marketing PR advertising agencies. Um, a little quick backstory about influencer marketing it really has generated from the PR side um, and earned media and trying to get, you know, placements in publications, print publications and well-known. And then this whole paid media thing sort of, you know, popped up about 10 or 15 years ago. So we know that the, that the marketing agencies out there already had their hands full with the traditional media, the earned media they were trying to, to nab. And so we come alongside and offer sort of a third party vendor, third party expert service that allows them to have an in-house feel, but um, yep. take you know 90% of the work off their plate. And it's all that we do. So we can really hone in on that. Um, yeah, there's, 
I mean, our we may work with agencies more than we work directly with the client side marketer, you know, in-house marketing team. Um, and what's really interesting is since we've been doing this over the last almost 10 years, the actual um, number of quote unquote influencer marketing agencies and networks has proliferated. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I think in the last year alone, there might've been 250 to 300 new agencies that spring up. And once upon a time before Velocity, that might've freaked me out. I would have thought, oh my gosh, I am late to the party and I let all this time go by. But now I clearly see where we fit in, what our specialty is and how we differentiate and rise above, you know, um, sort of rise to the top of all of that that noise in that space. Um, so it's, it's no longer even, even those agencies that might look competitive to us in terms of influencer marketing, it's not, it's not an issue at all. I love that. I, I, that is so exciting to me because I know people are constantly looking at things thinking, why would anybody want to work with us? And what they don't realize is just like in their own business, that there's not, that you can't be an expert in everything and you don't have bandwidth for everything. And so because we're all up against bandwidth issues and, and core competency issues every day, if you have a core competency and you can add that plus bandwidth to the marketplace, you have an opportunity. So I, I love that. I, I absolutely love it. What are some of the impacts that your clients and your clients' clients, in the case where you're working with an agency in support of one of their their clients, what are some of the impacts that and transformations that have happened because of the work that you're doing? One of the biggest obstacles right now in this space is brands and the agencies that serve them don't always have the option for an always on approach to their influencer marketing. So they've got budget to run one program, maybe first quarter, and then they've got to wait till the you know financial, the fiscal year ends in the next year, maybe they will do another one-off program. And we're seeing in the data just collected across um, surveying CMOs and, and in-house brands, um, marketing side, that, that that always on is a little bit elusive. It could be budget, it could be that bandwidth. And so what we provide at Kitchen Play is all of the benefits of an always on approach, even if your budget means that your specific brand will only be wanting, running one program. And what that means is, an always on approach means that maybe you have a longer term relationship with influencers throughout the year. You get better rates from them because you're doing four programs, five programs. Um, you get more brand loyalty from them. They're going to do some value add things that they might not if they're just doing that one, like one quarter, first quarter program. So if you are just running a one first quarter program, but you run it through us, our tribe, our community of influencers, they know there's that first quarter program with brand A, but then second quarter, there's two more programs coming up and third through kitchen play and third quarter more. So we have that always on um, sort of culture. And so the brands that work with us benefit from that because we bring the equity with the influencers through the, those programs. We bring, they do, um, we did a survey of our own community. They over deliver 70% of the time. Our influencers over deliver on what we've asked them to provide in any particular program. So again, that benefits these, these brands that have a budget for one program that can't run it, you know, always every month have something going on. We've got them covered. So that's one, one place where we bring a lot of impact. You know, that every, this is, I, I hope you all are really absorbing what Casey is saying because here she is, she's a small business owner. She's working with these amazing brands and she's able to carve out a real competitive advantage for her business and a real value proposition for these organizations. And frankly, the fact that she is a smaller company and she can be responsive and agile and really form these relationships and have her, you know, her hands on the steering wheel allow her to do this. And we talk about this all the time that just because you're small doesn't mean you can't bring an amazing value proposition to your clients. Maybe you're not in the influencer marketing space. Maybe you're a coach. Maybe you're a trainer. Maybe you're a speaker. Uh, you know, maybe you're a graphic designer. Maybe you're an HR consulting firm. It doesn't, you know, but being small doesn't provide you a disadvantage necessarily. It can actually be used as an advantage. And that's really a brilliant, 
a brilliant competitive advantage, Casey. And I love that you're so clear about it. And I love how confidently you're speaking about your business. I know there are going to be people watching this going like, oh my gosh, she's so much farther ahead than where I am. And she's so confident and clear. And, and my, you know, I'm just starting my business. And of course, you and I were both at that moment at one point where we were just starting our businesses and we weren't a hundred percent clear and we weren't a hundred, you know, confident, you know, there was, we've been through those stages as well. Um, about a year ago, you came to work with us specifically in our platinum program in velocity, um, which was really designed for someone where you were uh, a year ago. And so can you talk about just where your business was and kind of, because it had kind of an up and then a down and then kind of a sideways. So can you talk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. So I founded Kitchen Play in 2010. And it was for someone, literally, I almost, it was, it wasn't that it was by accident. It was a download like, oh, I know what this business is. And it has evolved over time. Um, it was also a little bit of like, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, like it was word of mouth was how we were getting more clients. And um, when I launched it, I also launched a, a yearly annual conference between uh, bloggers and brands. You know, back then we called them bloggers. Yeah. And um, so it was really like, oh my, how much can I do? Let me just, you know, invent more things and more services and try things out and um, throw spaghetti against the wall. And I got to the point around 2015 where. I'd hit about that 300,000 mark where, which you guys talk about. And I looked around and I thought this is, I didn't even think it, but I knew it was untenable. Like, mm. I don't know how to maintain this. I don't, it was a twofold thought. Number one, like on a specific level, I was, I had, those were like 50, the way I got there was about 15 one-off programs throughout the year. This conference with about you know, over 10 sponsors, 80 attendees. I had a retainer client in a field that was related, but not really my passion, losing sleep, like regularly losing sleep and just like in panic mode, not because of any one thing, but just this bigger thought of, I don't have a business background. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, right? What is, and if I don't know how I got here, I don't know how to keep going. So at that point it was suggested to me and I was like, signing up for courses on how to run masterminds and then how to build membership communities and right, what else can I do? So it was recommended to me to hire a business coach, which I'm all for. I want to learn. I want to, you know, a business coach sounds like somebody who's going to help shepherd this, help me steward this business. And it was a wonderful experience on the level of understanding mindset and really getting clear about how, how I might be standing in my own way. But the coach that I worked with really knew how to build coaches. She right. really knew how to train coaches. And I was also game for that. Like, I love to learn. I'm a quick start. Like, I'll, I'll do that. And I did. I built revenue out of the gate. Like, you know, like nobody's business. And it got to be about two, two and a half years in. I was like, wait a minute. I am not any closer. I'm farther away from building the core business that I had and almost had been convinced that that core business was somehow wrong or, or, you know, not what I should be pursuing. And I literally at that point just pulled up stakes. I was like, Nope, this is, this is not, I don't know how I got here. I'm 180 degrees off. Got to write the ship. Um, shortly after that is when I became aware of you and velocity and, Literally everything that came out of your mouth, everything I could watch or see or read, I couldn't take notes fast enough. I couldn't, I couldn't absorb it. It was, it was like the mothership, right? This is what I've been, this is this secret handshake I've been waiting for. And, um, and, and I will say that I had fallen from the high watermark of revenue mm. to about a third of that, which also alarmed me because I thought, okay, well, I'm proving my own theory, which is I don't know how to run this business. I don't know how to maintain this revenue. Ta-da. Yeah, here, here's proof. Um, so last year at the end of September, I signed up not just for Velocity, but for Platinum Impact because I knew how much density of, of education and learning and insight was available to me. And it would be a, not a waste, but I knew that I would not be able to 
properly capitalize on it if I didn't also get mentoring, accountability, community that um, Platinum provided. And it absolutely was the right move, 100%. Um, I see it now. I saw it through the whole year with Phil and the group. Um, and, and I'll stop there uh, just knowing that like my revenue is back on the right track. If you know, I'm looking at um, closing, if I close one more deal that's in the pipeline right now, I will be up 167% over last year, just, you know, just from, you know, just in 2019. And that trajectory is going to keep going up. So there's no more backsliding in my future. Oh my God. So first, congratulations. That is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, that is 167% over year over year is phenomenal, Casey. I'll like, take it. Absolutely, absolutely. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, you said something that was an aha for me and you think that having done this business for 10 years that like, you know, your own business, but there's this great quote from the book, selling the invisible. And I think it's Peter Schultz who wrote that. And the quote is, if you listen closely, your clients will explain your business to you. It's one of the reasons that as business owners, we should do these kinds of conversations, you guys, because your clients will say things to you and you're like, oh, but you just said something to me, Casey, that I really hadn't thought about. And that is that, you know, when people, because people sometimes will compare to us, like they'll think like, oh, should I go work with Angelique and Phil and, you know, work with the corporate Asian community and something like going into a velocity program, or should I work with, you know, Jane coach or Joe coach, you know, these other coaches that are out there. And you know what is really fascinating? And I hadn't it really just in this moment clicked for me in almost every one, not all, but in almost every one of those other programs, the coach is teaching all the people in the program to build a business exactly like they have built, literally just be like minions that build, like they just replicate the same business model over and over and over and over again. And what's really fascinating is in our community, we actually aren't teaching people to build the business like the corporate agent. We're teaching them to build consulting businesses, executive coaching businesses, product companies, um, influencer marketing, you know, like everybody's business is different. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a very different kind of community because we're not creating like carbon copy businesses. Right. Um, and I hadn't really thought about that until you just said that everybody's business is their business. What we're teaching are those fundamental principles of building, of, of doing business development in the B2B corporate space. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like it, it's, it, but a lot of those programs teach you just how to be a coach, just like they're a coach. Mm -hmm. Um, and that usually is not right for the corporate world. And a lot of those strategies, you know, are not right. So thank you for sharing that with me. Cause that was kind of like, I had never actually thought about that before of just the diversity of our community and the types of businesses that are out there. Um, you know, I think one of the other things that you said, that's really worth pointing out to folks is that it happens where we make decisions that were literally like, wait. I just spent a year going in this direction. What, what have, wait, like, what have I done? Um, and you have to pull up stakes, I think is what you said. And then like you go back. I did that in my business. I had for about a year and a half, a company called Richer, Smarter, Happier. I actually ended up selling that trademark to somebody. Um, I had a business called Richer, Smarter, Happier because I thought I was supposed to create a coaching business like everybody else created a coaching business. Mm -hmm. And, um, at the end of that year and a half, my, my revenue was down. I was really miserable. I didn't feel like I was, and then I stepped back and I was like, what do I know? And what I knew was corporate. This was actually in 2009. So it was right around the time you were starting kitchen play is when I became the corporate agent. And that Casey for me was like that moment where I was like, wait, what I know that I want to do is be a consultant on the side of things where people are playing in that B2B corporate space. But I had complete, you know, I spent a year and a half branding, building newsletter, you know, like everything in the opposite direction. And it wasn't until I spoke on stage at a conference and then I watched the video back that I was just like, oh my gosh, what have I done? 
Um, so I kind of had like an out of body experience watching the video of me talking, realizing that I had gone in the wrong direction. But I mean, that happens. And I think the faster, did you have, when that happened for you, I know for me, there, there was like a week of beating myself up, but then I was, I was kind of over it. How did you feel about that when you kind of had gone one direction and then you realized you want to go in another emotionally? Were you like, oh, well, water off the duck's back? Or did you have a little bit of sort of a hangover from that? I intentionally worked on not letting the hangover settle in and linger. So I found the bright spots. Like learning to coach is, is going to help me in what I'm doing now. I see that clearly. Um, it also was this really wild aha around who I am as a person, which mm -hmm to that point, had been someone who didn't trust her own instincts, who didn't trust her own sort of North Star. And so, of course, when a coach was like, I got you, I know where we're going, I was like, aye, aye, Captain, I will follow that, you know. And so I think actually when I dug into that moment, I appreciate it for it had to happen mm -hmm. to turn me into the CEO I am now. To, to almost like cut ties with yep. the need to follow somebody else to, um, and I'm still working on this, like thinking people know more than I do in my own business and my own area of expertise even. So it was, it was a formative moment. It probably, it just had to happen that way. And that's how I look at it. So I don't, I didn't linger I too that. much in the regret and flagellating myself a yeah. little bit for sure. I'm like, Oh God, if I'd found velocity in 2015, yeah. I forget about it. I'd be right. you know nuts, but I'm just thankful I found it when I did, and we're gonna work from there. I love it. I, I I probably spent about a week in that sort of wallowing of of it, and then sort of found my way out. But it's so interesting how so as I'm listening to you, I could I I hear myself in in it because I felt like. I, ha I, I had to listen to somebody else. And in fact, for me in 2010, when I talked to people about teaching coaches and consultants and experts how to sell to corporate, 2010 was really the heyday of the online marketing space. I mean, e-zines and teleseminars were all the rage. I mean, we forget that was only a decade ago, but teleseminars, info products, and e-zines were like the thing. And so when I started talking about teaching people how to sell to corporate, people thought I was crazy. and I had spent that last year and a half listening to other people and I had to find that courage to listen to my own voice uh, to know what was right for me. One thing I'll say about that is that what happens for me today, because we have a much larger team today and we also have a lot of outside consultants and vendors that support us, is that you get so much advice coming in at you and you really have to learn to trust that voice because everyone has an opinion, but a lot of times, you know, these opinions might be from, you know, a vendor or a consultant, you know, service provider team that you're working with. And, and this is, you know, maybe someone who's, you know, 30 years old, they're getting paid $60,000 a year and they're, they're giving you advice. And sometimes it's advice you should take. And sometimes as the CEO of your business, you have to say, wait a second, that doesn't align with our vision. That, that actually doesn't resonate for me. So I love that you're talking about finding your voice and trusting that, that, that is a skill that only gets more important as your business gets bigger because then you have a lot more people trying to push and tug and 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 tell you what to do and you have to be that stalwart that is like on the north star so i love that so you spent you've had a really interesting year in platinum we don't actually talk that much about our platinum program because we only have 10 people in the program, but would you mind sharing just some of your experience? It, it's not with me, Phil, who's our executive vice president, who's been with us for eight years now, I think, um, you know, is the, is the primary mentor. I'm, I'm somewhat part of that program, but Phil is the, the primary mentor. Um, and so you've worked really closely with Phil this year. Can you just talk a little bit about your experience and, and some of the breakthroughs that you've had in that work? Yes, absolutely. So I signed up, you know, end of September, early October last year. And by the end of that month, we were having our first live strategic intensive. And which is why I signed up the way that I did. I wanted, I, I'm a kind of person, if I decide I want my hair cut, I want it cut today. You know, I don't want to book an appointment. I don't want to wait. So when I knew I wanted in on Velocity and in Platinum, I wanted to make sure it was in time for that first um, live strategy intensive. And I remember 
so much happened. I mean, it, it's mind blowing, but the two things I took away from that that were transformative right off the bat. Number one, um, Phil helped me understand how I operate best, how, who, who I am sort of as a business person, as a CEO. And specifically what he said to me is Casey, you're a hunter. So you like to leave the cave. You like to hunt the woolly mammoth, bring it down, drag it back to the cave. And then you don't care how it's processed. You want other people to slice it and dice it. And I, my jaw, I was like, nobody's ever said that to me. Nobody's ever sort of validated or put it in such crystal clear terms. So I vowed I'm going to get a t-shirt printed that says I am a hunter. And then the second thing that happened was he was discussing visibility protocols, visibility ideas with somebody in the group who's a high fact finder. And I'm not. And I was listening to this conversation and it was about, you know, get on the phone, do insights interviews and offer to um, give them, you know, share with them your insights, your white paper when you're all done with that. And literally I was like shrinking like, oh, I, that sounds like torture to me. So I had to ask, I was like, Phil, like, what about for somebody like me? Without even blinking, he said, Casey, you just need to run your mouth. And again, I was like, this is music to my ears. I love running my mouth. Like I love, I love, it couldn't have been, it was just like worth the price of admission right there that my entire life was validated by him saying you need to run your mouth. So right off the bat, those two clarifying moments. And then the other strategic um, live intensives, you know, things would happen where I was really resistant maybe to something he might be saying or like, oh no, we don't do that at Kitchen Play because I, I didn't yet have the vision, sort of the expanded vision. I'd say, well, you know, we can't, it's not always easy for us to give ROI because marketing wants to um, impact sales and they're not talking to each other within an organization. So the sales numbers don't come back to the marketing people. Da -da. And he was like, well, then offer that and fix it. You know? and I was like, wait, wait, back up. What are you saying? And it was this moment of, oh, there's a gap. Stop using that as an excuse and start mining it. Yeah. And so that also, that was in February. And so the next six months were, became this journey of where do I see other gaps? Where are, you know, what do we do? He said, you've forgotten more about influencer marketing than most people you talk to will ever know. What, how do you get that on paper? How do you put that into an assessment? How do you, so th those are, those are a couple of like really tangible, um, when I stopped resisting and started listening, oh, he's, you know, it's just, it's just totally expanded the possibilities. We just see everybody for who they are mm -hmm. and just, you know, we want the business to, to be a reflection of who they are innately, their innate skills, their gifts, their passion. We want the business to work for them. It's not our business, it's your business. So it's gotta work for you. It's also one of the reasons that we um, only work in cohorts of 10 because we get to know everybody's business so well. You know, we really get to know everybody's business. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, but people really say to us, they feel very seen. Um, and, and sometimes people cry because they feel like it's the first time that someone's really looking at them and giving them permission mm -hmm. to actually do things the way that are going to flow like a river for them. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you, I'm so thankful you're willing to share that anecdote because you know, with, business should flow. Like it should not be, you know, when you feel like, oh my gosh, that strategy would just take the life out of me. That is definitely not the strategy strategy right. for you. I'm a quick start as well, right? Like I'm a quick start. I'm a six stack finder. So I have a little bit of, of uh, ability to kind of hang in. I can get to a seven, but I need to run my mouth as well. Like that's just how I do business development. Other people, they have to research and it's through that process of being able to ask questions that they are the most comfortable. And so we use that fact finding to make them really comfortable to go do business development. So I love that. The other thing that you shared though was that idea that it really is our blind spots in our business. You know, if we don't, if we're not aware, what, what often people are having stop them or the things that they're feeling like are, are like you're, you're beating your head against your wall, 
the wall with your clients because they're, it's like usually we can flip that upside down and actually turn it into an opportunity in the business. So I love that, I love that you were able to do that. Do you think that when you look, I mean, you've had significant growth in, in your business this year, which is amazing. Do you think, like, why? Like, what happened? Like, what was different for you? Was it the awareness of what you could sell? Was it the way you were having conversations? Like, what affected your ability to do that? Were you having to work, like, tw some people would say, well, were you working twice as many hours to get basically twice as much revenue? No, no. It is a combination of a ton of things, um, but I'll try to narrow it down. So it was um, helping me grow up as a CEO and stop trying to convince folks of what we do and speak in language that I thought I was comfortable with because I'm not a fact finder, I'm not a data collector. And instead it was, you know, the first six months, even to this day, really um, getting comfortable with, let me think more deeply about what I'm hearing back from my clients, what I'm hearing back from the industry, um, so that I could find the tip of the spear, right? Find my way into those organizations, their pain point, their super problem. There was that. Um, there was, you know, learning how to put together a capabilities briefing. Now, it's evolved tremendously over oh, the bet. year, mm -hmm. but at least I got started, right? I got, I put, planted my flag, and then I've you know, change the decoration on the flag and I've rejiggered the flag. So it, um, it looks much more, it's just much more aligned and resonating with my intended audience. Um, but I will say the, the astounding, like when I was most awed by all of this came in about August, September and Phil had been this in very patient, like definitely never judgmental, never like, why are we talking about this again, Casey? When I'd asked for the 10th time, are you sure? And really tell me that again. He was just right there. And I call it, I thought of it as a steady drumbeat of you are the CEO, Casey, you are the expert. He never questioned it. He never lectured me. He never tried to teach it to me. It was just this drumbeat, this drumbeat and questions like, over the summer, he said, what's your get out of bed number? Like what, what is the limit? You know, the, the minimum you would work for. And he'd asked me that before. We'd had that conversation before, but finally I got real about it and I laid out a, a pretty high number. And at that moment, boom, 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 all this stuff came in yep. because I was willing to show up with my own standards, my own filter, my own red velvet rope. And I could also back it up. Why are we charging that much? Why is that our minimum? What do we put behind it? And I'll tell you, Angelique, within, you know, sort of the September timeframe, that month, I did some quick calculations and in my pipeline and, you know, proposed and ready to be signed was the potential for as much as I'd ever made in my business through two clients and seven programs. Wow. That's so, incredible, especially when you contrast that to at one point you were having to run around doing 15 different one-off clients, new projects and events, sponsors. I mean, you were just running around like just all over the place. Right. Exhausted, frazzled, stressed out. In September, I was like, this is lovely. This is calm and this is, it all makes sense and I feel great. Um, so it was such a contrast. I wanted to make sure to share that because that was not expected. That's not something that I came into the program. I wanted more revenue, period. And I'm willing to work my tail off for it. I'm willing to lose sleep. And all of a sudden, I got that and calm and confidence and a short, like, I know what the next step is. I know how to, if things are off by five degrees, I just need more visibility. Or if the visibility is not getting it for me, let's look at our bridge offerings. You know, all of these nuggets within the, the framework. They're just, it's, it's foolproof in many ways. You know what I think, um, I, I am so glad, I'm so thankful that you're willing to share that because I do think that one of the things that has happened in our small business world as a whole 
is just an attitude of more, 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 like, and there's just this like feeling that like if there's, and you know, as a business owner, we have to kind of, you know, there's always more we want to do, right? So there is that learning to kind of throttle a little bit, especially for us quick starts, but you can actually have growth when you have, when you have clarity and you are in control of your business versus having a tiger by the tail. And I feel it almost feels a little bit like you, you know, the one way that you got to your high revenue mark was by having a tiger by the tail. And, you know, and then, you know, this time you did it really with you in the driver's seat and your navigation and knowing like you said that if this if something kind of starts to go awry it's like well i know how to adjust and come back and if we go a little bit this way i know how to come back and really business should be really joyful i mean it really you know it should be you choosing the clients that you work with the type of work that you do um having that number that you don't get out of bed in the morning you know if that number isn't the right number it you know that's how it should feel and we all have a bad week i mean look it's life um, but generally speaking, you need to be in control. I'm also a big believer, Casey, that, you know, as you know, we teach that business development is a system of systems, that everything in your business has to have a home. If you're doing this strategy, where does it live in the overall system? Like, why are you doing that? And where does it live? So that when something goes wrong in your business, you know which lever to pull on to fix it. Mm -hmm. And you've been such a great student for lack of a better word, in, in, in really embracing that and saying, I get it. If I'm going to do something, it's going to be for a reason. I understand what the goal of it is. And then if, you know, if it isn't working, I know what to tweak, what dial to turn, what lever to pull on if I need to shift it. And I think that's been really amazing. You really have been just a complete role model of, um, you know, you came in with your brilliance. We're not influencer marketing experts. You came in with that brilliance. You have this amazing 10 year track record and you just came in really open minded saying, I know what I want and I'm going to implement. And I, you know, I always try to point that out because, you know, we could have, you know, talked till, you know, our faces turned blue, but if you wouldn't have implemented and taken the steps, nothing would have happened. So the credit is all to you that you, you implemented and you stuck with it and, and you got the result that you did. So tell us a, like, where are you now? What is your vision for the future? Like what's next for you? Where are you taking this business? Um, quite literally, I'm taking my team to the real deal next year, which I'm so excited about. That is like, that was this intuitive download when it came out. I was like, oh, this would be so much fun and so delicious. Um, but that speaks to, I have a team. I have a team now and I followed the velocity, building a team protocol. And I have to share with you, every person that got to our final interview and that we ended up hiring said, this has been the best process. We have enjoyed this so much on the receiving end, you know, on the yeah. applicant side. Yeah. Um, so I'm a believer. I'm totally, um, not that I wasn't, but it really, it worked. So I have a team now and I firmly believe that we would not have been able to grow or scale the way I want to in 2020 without the team already in place. One of those things where your mind shuts down around those opportunities. Like you said, it's too much work. We don't have the, the capacity. Now I've got the capacity. And I think that also went hand in hand with why all this business was showing up. It was right at the same time that our team was being onboarded. Um, so what the future holds is, is continuing to, I mean, revenue, of course, we want, you know, continue to, to do that, but revenue that indicates that we are impacting our clients work lives you know i actually gave a lot of thought to this in the last couple of weeks hearing you talk about what your mission is that you really believe that business changes lives that if we can you know through your work if you can um, help businesses do better know better operate better that all the people within those organizations and i was like hmm what is my mission? Like, what is my big, it really inspired me to start, like, is it just making money? Well, yeah, it has been for a long time. But then I realized I'm here to change the way that marketing is done. Yep. And I'm so excited about that because there are real people behind that. There are real people who are in positions in marketing agencies, in client side marketing, 
who are pulling their hair out, who are frustrated, who are feeling like, well, marketing is just the arts and crafts of a business. You know, we're not really serious. Like, I'm ready to step in and own even bigger than the influencer marketing piece. I think that's our doorway to how we're going to change the way marketing is done. So that's, that's my driving goal. And then, um, you know, just, I want to keep deepening how I understand myself and my business through the velocity approach and through the learnings. And, you know, every time I go through a new video or a new piece in the vault, I understand something different and I just want to keep doing that. I think that's an endless source of joy for me and growth. And it's all right there just kind of for the taking, which I love. That's awesome. Well, and you know, it is one of the reasons we designed Velocity the way that we did as a lifetime program, because each stage of your business, you really understand the strategies in a new way. You apply them in a different way. You know, it's, you know, when you're, when you're just starting as maybe a coach or, you know, you apply it one way and you have a team of five, all of a sudden of of these bench members that are working with you and you apply it in a different way. And so I love hearing that, that, that was our intention. So hearing that, that you're doing that in your business just makes my heart flutter because that was our goal with the way that we designed it. Um, You're absolutely amazing. And, and for what it's worth, I, you know, one of the things that does happen right around the level that you are now is because you know that if I follow these steps and I take these actions that I can, that I can generate business, that I know that I can proactively know how to bring business into my business. I don't have to hope and pray that I just spray the marketplace with some, you know, blog articles and hope that business comes to me. But if I take these steps, I can actually proactively generate business. When you it's kind of like the hierarchy of human needs. You know, once you know that you can proactively bring business into your into your company and you know that you can get clients, it actually frees you up for that next step, Casey, which is that mission vision of like, what is our mission going to be? And also, what is our thought leadership platform? That because you now have the breathing room to think about that. You know you have a bench. You know you have a system to bring clients into the business. You've changed the way that you think about problem solving in your business, which is is one of those like things that's really hard to talk to people if they haven't been through something like platinum. That you actually learn to think differently about your business and think differently about how you're solving problems in your business. But once you make those shifts that you have you have new mental bandwidth freed up to think about what now is going to be our mission and how are we going to really affect that message in the marketplace through keynotes, through articles, through conversations with executives, with the way that we talk to our clients, with the services that we offer, with books that we write or whatever it is, you know, what is that legacy? What is that mission? And, and really that's real where that, that's like the next natural evolution of your business. So I'm so glad that you're thinking that way. You, you know, too many people try to start with that and they don't know how to bring clients into their business. And so it's really kind of the cart before the horse. Now that you know that piece of it, you can really affect that, that mission in the marketplace. And, and as that gels and as that, you know, gains momentum, there's really going to be no stopping you because you have so much energy and passion around this. So, um, it's infectious for sure. And, um, you have me inspired about, about it now that I'm, I'm hearing you talk about it. This has been amazing. Before we wrap up, I know I've kept you longer than I promised that I would. Is there anything else you want to share before we go? Because this has just been absolutely amazing. And, and um, I can't wait to see where you are now a year from now. Oh, me too. Me too. You know, I, I look back to that moment when I really woke up it, and realized how far I had sort of far adrift I was from the business that at one time I had loved. You know, I used to get out of bed and like click my heels and my husband would be like, who are, like, this is so weird. You actually look forward to working. And I did until it got to be, uh, you know, that I didn't know, like, I, you know, got to that level. So I look back to that moment of sort of awakening and, and I want to just thank you and thank Phil and the entire Velocity, your team, the, the members, because it, my business really is a source of joy. Again, it's a source of personal development, professional development. It is, um, it is 
it's everything that I would have wanted. And at the same time, I feel so good about um, my role in it, like knowing where, like that I'm at the wheel. So I, just a heartfelt thank you because it, it, it was scary to say, oh, I'm going to, I've been off by 180 degrees and I'm going to try to turn back and recover, like reclaim lost ground. I had no idea. I hadn't heard of you. I didn't know. I was just blind faith. I've got to do this. I've got to get back on track. So every hope and every desire and every piece of faith I put in velocity, like my really, honestly, my last, it was my last ditch effort. Like this has to work. Absolutely. Has worked, has paid off, has unlocked untold opportunities and potential in me that just thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Casey. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I'm going to tear up, which is like, <laughs> it's like never. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, thank you for putting your trust in us. That's, you know, I think we've all kind of been in those moments of, of that. And, and we did not have a long-term relationship before you came. You really had just found out about us. And that's a scary, you know, that's, that can be a really scary thing to do, um, especially in today's, you know, marketplace. So thank you for putting your trust in us. And we're thrilled to have you as part of this community and, and an amazing role model in the community and a contributor. And honestly, we get up every morning, clicking our heels, coming. We really do. I mean, I told you that I had a bad day this week when I missed a flight and I was like, oh, um, but we, you know, we all have those moments, but we love what we do. Like, like in every cell of our body, my husband said to me, he goes, you just what you are driven by is your clients and your passion. Like, you know, thank goodness the rest of us are like running the back end operations because, <laughs> you know, you are just driven by just your love for your clients and just like, you know, like you just like literally pour into it. And I'm like, I am, it is, it's what I, it's what I live to do. So thank you so much, Casey, for sharing this. I know you are a successful business owner. And so your time is really valuable. And I know you've inspired a lot of people to just think about their business and the decisions that they have to make. And, um, we literally could not be more honored to work with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, here is just to an amazing next year for you because I know it's going to be even more epic than this year. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to that. I can't Cheers wait. Cheers to that. Awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining Casey and I today. I hope you're walking away with some mindset shifts, some specific strategies that you can implement, and really some some just big lessons about what it means to be a CEO and a business owner and, and those, those turning points that we all have in our business. If you want to learn more about our Platinum program, then I definitely encourage you to reach out to our team. Um, we take a very different approach on calls with us. Um, you know, no one's twisting your arm to work with us. We want our clients coming in to work with us with just everything wanting to work with us. So you are welcome to have a very, you know, easy call with our team just to learn about who we are and, and, and what our platinum program is all about. And I promise you, our team does not bite or make you feel guilty or bad about where you are in your, your business or the decisions you make. It is not who we are as a business. So you can schedule a call with our team through the corporateagent.com and we'd be happy to talk with you about where you are. Until next time, everybody, this is Angelique signing off. Bye-bye.